Good morning, Overbrookers, and welcome to the worship of our Lord this first Sunday of the season of Christmas, December 27, 2020. I'm Reverend Bill Goss. This is Reverend Mary Goss, and we'll be leading worship with you this morning. Um, first off, just a couple of announcements. We hope that everybody had a great holiday this past weekend. Um, I know we did, and so we hope that uh, your holiday was filled with joy and every good thing. There are no specific announcements other than to remind you of the midweek email. That comes out usually Wednesdays, but sometimes on Thursday. Um, and that email has lots of information about the life of the church and what is taking place, even though we might uh, the building is closed, we still are doing ministry in lots of amazing ways. It also is where you will find the email addresses and cell, or, uh, cell phone numbers of me and of Bill in case you have a pastoral emergency so that we can um, still respond to you in a socially distanced and appropriate way during this time as well. And of course, during this time, if we were actually in the same physical space worshiping together, we would pass the peace of Christ with a, with a hug or a handshake or a fist bump. Uh, but because we can't be in the same space, we have to pass the peace of Christ in a new way. So we invite you to call up at least three people that you would normally have seen in church and share the peace of Christ with them and then spend some time just talking and catching up. Uh, and then that way we can be the church together, even, even apart. So the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, Mary. And also with you. And also with you. Let's worship God together. I'm so glad to see you. I hope that you had a good Christmas. I hope that you enjoyed time with family and friends, whether it was in person or on Zoom, which a lot of us did. I hope you um, received some great presents, and I hope that you gave some amazing presents that were fun to watch other people open. And I hope you enjoyed the snow because that was pretty fun to have snow on Christmas Eve and to be able to have it Christmas morning and, and on into this week. Harry received a gift I wanted to share with you. He received this ornament right here. Do you see this? This is an ornament of the world. It is a globe of the whole world, right? And it made me think about Jesus, this ornament did. You know, at Christmas, we celebrate this that Jesus is born as this cute little baby. 
But it's not just about the baby. It's not about the baby if the shepherds visited or the angels sang about. But Jesus was born for the whole world. Jesus was born to help change the whole world, to bring love for the whole world. And we see that in the story of the wise men that we celebrate because in the, Christ, in the church, Christmas goes 12 days. And we, we think not just about the birth of Jesus, but we think about the visit of the wise men. The wise men came to see Jesus and they weren't family or friends that usually come for babies. The wise men were strangers, right? Jesus didn't know them. Mary and Joseph didn't know them. They just came to visit because God told them to, told them to follow the star and to go visit this new king and to worship him because this king, this baby Jesus that came as a baby is different. So these wise men came and they, they worshiped Jesus. And they knew that this Jesus who was born as a baby would grow up to share love with people from different countries, different families, different religion, religions, people from all over the world. Because Jesus came to share God's love with the whole world and with everyone in it. Oh, what great news that is. So at Christmas, we do celebrate the birth of that baby. But remember, we celebrate that baby that came to share God's love with the whole entire world, not just those of us in Overbrook Church or here in Columbus, but everyone all over the world. What great news that is on this day. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for this day, for loving us in every way. Help us to love and not to fuss, because we know that you love us. Amen. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. Enjoy the snow.
This being the Sunday after Christmas, we thought it'd be a good time to do something we've done before, which is to have a story time, kind of a story time with Pastor Bill. Um, so our message this week is actually a book called Home by Another Way, and it's written by a, a great preacher um, by the name of Barbara Brown Taylor. So listen for the word, uh, listen for the word of the Lord as it comes to us uh, from Home by Another Way. Uh, first, we'll be reading scripture, though, from the gospel according to Matthew. We're going to read chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds and souls be worthy in your sight. Let your spirit move amongst us that we might hear your word anew and come to understand your will for our lives more fully. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. And now, Home by Another Way by Barbara Brown Taylor. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there were three very wise men who were all sitting in their own countries, minding their own business, when a bright star lodged in the right eye of each one of them. The star was so bright that none of them could tell whether it was burning in the sky or in their own imaginations, but they were wise enough to know it did not matter all that much. The point was, something beyond them was calling them, and it was a tug they had been waiting for all their lives. Each in his own country had tried books, tried magic, tried astrology. One had lived on nothing but dried herbs boiled in water. Another had spent his entire fortune learning how to read and write in an ancient language. The third had learned to walk on hot coals, though it did nothing for him beyond the great sense of relief he felt at the end. Despite their best efforts, all three of them still felt that something was missing. They were all glad for a reason to get out of town, which was clearly where the star was calling them, out away from everything they knew how to manage and survive, out from under the reputations they had built for themselves, the high expectations, the disappointing returns. And so they set out one by one, each believing that he was the only one with a star in his eye, until they all ran into one another on the road to Jerusalem. From a distance, each thought the other to be a mirage at first, a twinkling reflection made of vapor and heat. But as they drew near to one another, they saw the star they had in common, like a tattoo or a secret handshake, something that made them brothers before they spoke. They all believed that the star was leading them to Jerusalem. This made perfect sense because they had every reason to believe they were on their way to meet a king. <clears throat> they had no trouble gaining entrance to the palace. They looked rich, and that was enough to get them a royal audience. But the king they met was something of a disappointment. He was lumpy and rumpled, and he had terrible breath. His skin looked a funny orange color and sickly, as if his bile had gotten the best of him. The guards on either side of him shook in fear of their king, so much that their spears rattled against their shields. Without even comparing notes, the wise men knew he was not the person they were looking for. Do you know of any other kings in the general area? They asked him. He had been picking at his fingernails until then, letting them know how bored he was. But their question got his attention. He looked right at them for the first time. That was when he saw the star in each of their eyes. His own eyes grew perfectly round, like the eyes of a snake. The king asked the wise men if they would please excuse him for a moment. Then he stepped into his private chapel to confer with his clergy. They whipped out their old reference books, which smelled of mold, and told the king what he wanted to know. Yes, they said, there was something in the book of Micah about a new ruler for Israel, but nothing to get excited about. It was short. It had been there for a long time. 
it was unlikely that the men in the other room were fulfilling that prophecy. But sure, hey, why not? Send the wise men to Bethlehem to check it out, to save the king a little money instead of doing his own research. So that was what the king did. He garbled, combed his hair, and went back to tell the wise men they should go to Bethlehem at once, with his blessing, on one condition. That they come back and tell him who his successor was, so that he could um, send flowers to the new king. His breath smelled like pine salt when he said it, which made the wise men feel queasy. They knew something was not right, but once they were back out in the night air, they could see the star in the sky again, and it set their minds at rest. They followed it right to the doorway of a one-room house in Bethlehem. It was a perfectly nice place, modest but well-built, though not the kind of place where they had expected to find a king. A dog was sniffing the woodpile under the eaves in hopes of a mouse. Someone was practicing the lute next door, going over the same notes again and again. The smell of dinner was still in the air. Wheat cakes cooked on a griddled grease, a griddle greased with sheep's fat, lentils with lots of garlic and rice. The place looked so simple they might never have chosen it themselves. But since the star had chosen it for them, they knocked. When the door opened, the couple standing behind it almost died of fright. Not that the wise men noticed. With their arms full of gifts, they crowded into the small space, bumping their turbans on the rafters and snagging their robes on the rough furniture. All they could see was the baby, who was not afraid, and whose right eye shone with the same star they had seen before they ever left home. It was him, then, whoever he was. They did not have a clue, but they knew what to do. They got on their knees and bowed their heads. Then they gave him the things they had brought for him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, all the wrong things they could see now, things he had no use for. They should have brought him goat's milk, a warm blanket, something shiny to hang over the crib. But how could they have guessed? The child's parents were gracious. They thanked the strangers for their expensive gifts and held them up for the baby to see. Then, to the wise men's complete surprise, the child's mother picked him up and handed him around so that each of them held that damp, soft, living weight in his arms. When they were finished admiring him, she took her baby back, nursed him, and put him to bed. Then, before the light coming through the window of the house had entirely gone out, the three wise men fell asleep right where they sat. In the morning, when they woke, the wise men could not find their stars anywhere. They searched each other's eyes, but the stars were gone. Frantically, they looked in all the corners and under the chairs. The baby's mother even shook out his blankets, but still, no stars. Soon the wise men calmed down and said, never mind, we do not need them anymore. They had found what they were looking for, something they could not lose. As much as they hated to, they added, they had better be on their way. They would not be going back through Jerusalem, they said. All three of them had woken from the same identical dream, warning them to steer clear of the city. If anyone in Jerusalem knew anything at all, they would be here instead of there. Besides, none of the wise men's old maps worked anymore. They would have to find a new way home. So the wise men picked up their packs, which were lighter than before. Then they lined up in front of the baby to thank him for the gifts he had given them. What in the world are you talking about? The baby's mother said, laughing. For the scent and weight and skin of a baby, said the first wise man, who had no interest in living on herbs anymore. For this home and the love here, said the second wise man, who could not remember how to say it in the ancient language. For a really great story, said the third wise man, 
who thought that telling it might do a lot more for him than walking on hot coals. Then the wise men walked outside, stretched, kissed the baby goodbye, and went home by another way. To God be all glory, honor, power, and dominion in this world and in the world that is to come. Amen. Let us join our hearts together in prayer this day. Good and gracious God, with the celebration of Christmas in the air, we offer you thanks and praise for the gifts you give us every day, especially those gifts that often go unnoticed, like the love that links family and friends, the blessings of forgiveness, the kindness of a stranger, the gift of laughter and of tears, and for glimmers of hope. On this holy morning, O oh God, remind us again of the mystery of the Christ child and the good news proclaimed by your breaking into our world. And keep us mindful, O oh God, of those for whom good news may feel fleeting. We pray for those who lie in a hospital room and those who offer them care, for those who live on the streets or in their cars, for those who are ill at home or who are carrying the lingering effects of COVID and other illnesses. We pray for those who are slowly dying and those who walk with them and provide presence and comfort while they do. 
We pray for those who are overwhelmed, who are tired, who are anxious, and who feel so very alone. And we pray, O oh God, that all who hurt and the many ways that it shows forth may know health and healing and wholeness, and that in the midst of their pain, they are able to see you working through those around them to offer hope and peace and abundant love. And, O oh God, we pray this day for those without food to eat, clean water to drink, or a dry and safe place to rest their head. We pray for those who are treated differently because of the color of their skin, their beliefs in marriage, the religion they practice, or the geographic area they were born. And we pray for the division that divides us, to be bridged by the similarities between us. Make yourself known among us yet again. Remind us of your abundant love and challenge us to answer your call to spread your love to every single child of God. Holy God, you call us this morning to begin the real work of Christmas, and we respond in faith as we join our voices together in the words we are taught by Christ your Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This concludes our service for this morning. We are thankful that you chose to worship with us today. Now go, back to the journeys from which you turned aside to be here seeking to love and serve the Lord with all that you have and all that you are. And as you go, may the grace of God the Father, the peace of Jesus Christ, God's Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all, now and forever. Amen.